One of the first domains that you're actually going to be able to unlock is in Cecilia Garden, which is the domain of forgery. And this is going to be used to basically farm out weapon ascension materials. And this is going to be pretty important for adding extra base attack to your characters and stuff like that, which will eventually help you do bigger numbers and just more damage overall. A couple of things to know about most domains is they are going to have some sort of disorder to them. First thing that it actually pops up as soon as you get in is the ley line disorder. So this is going to be kind of like the 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 special case for each domain. Most domains have something either to hinder your progress or to kind of shift the way that you play the domains. This one in particular is going to have slowing water. So if we take a look at the wiki page for this domain, you can see that slowing water essentially is going to greatly increase your skills cooldown duration. At the first level, it's going to increase it by 80%. So essentially, if one of your effects takes 10 seconds on cooldown, it's now going to take 18 seconds. Essentially, it's going to do 80% extra to your cooldown. At levels two through four, it's going to double it. So it's going to increase the cooldowns. So now if you had a 10 second cooldown, it would be 20 seconds. Essentially though, there are a couple of ways that you can remove this hydro element. Basically you are afflicted with hydro. What you can do is remove that by doing a couple of different things. Things like Sinyan with her elemental skills, she will actually apply pyro to the character inside of the shield. So what you could actually do is use that to remove this status effect and get around the cooldown reduction. Now, this is going to be featuring completely free to play characters and you can replace these characters that I use in here with anything that you have uh, that's obviously better and you will do better. But I wanted to use as completely free to play options as I could just to make this more available to more people. So what are we gonna be looking at here? Well, essentially you're gonna be able to farm out your weapon ascension materials. That's all fine and dandy. Uh, if you do this on a specific day, it may be something different. If you do it on Sunday specifically though, you can actually go through and choose exactly which one of these you want. Here you can kind of see uh, the other rewards that will uh, give you and stuff like that. Uh, this is what we're most after though, the enemies. So at level one, we're gonna have some hydro slimes and that's the only thing. We're gonna have 19 small little slimes and one large slime. At level two, we're gonna have 12 of these small slimes, three of the larger slimes, and then we're gonna have wooden shield hilotrol guards. This is gonna be kind of important. There's eight of those. And then at level three, it's gonna be 14 smalls, four large. We're gonna have three of the hydro samaturals. These are kind of like, uh, I don't wanna say mages, but they're, they're basically like shamans. <laughs> they're, they're just gonna inflict things with hydro and it's kind of annoying because it will inflict you with hydro. They have a way to reapply the hydro status to you in between the pulses that the domain is already going to apply. So they can be kind of annoying. And then there is also one abyss mage, which is the most annoying part of level three. He is a hydro abyss mage, so keep that in mind. And then at level four, there's gonna be two waves. Essentially, you're gonna have to defeat eight large hydro slimes first and a wave two will spawn. During this wave two, you're gonna have to fight two hydro abyss mages at the same time and that's pretty much it. Now, some things to consider whenever doing this domain, if you're having some trouble, uh, one thing that you can actually consider is actually crafting some of this uh, potion. This is the Hydro Potion, which is going to increase your resistance to Hydro for 25 seconds. Since this domain is specifically targeting Hydro enemies, a lot of them are going to do pure Hydro damage. And when they do, you can actually resist 25% of the damage that they are doing. This is actually super helpful 300 seconds is going to be five full minutes. Depending on how fast you are, you could get multiple runs within that th 300 seconds and you should be good. Now, depending on how you set up your team, you could also consider doing some of these essential oils. If you have a specific type that you have on your team, if you have double pyro, then you could use, you know, the flaming essential oil. If you have double cryo, you could use the frosting one. Uh, basically, you can kind of you know, tailor this towards your specific team. My team is gonna to be totally different than yours, so it's gonna be kind of case specific. But don't forget that these exist because these can help you out a lot. These will actually increase your cryo damage or whatever element you choose by 25%. So an extra 25% cryo damage is a lot on some characters, and that could actually be super helpful. Also lasts for 300 seconds, so same thing applies. By AR-16, you should have Lisa. If you haven't done the domain to unlock Lisa, you need to go do that. But uh, she will actually have a 20% chance to refund a portion of the materials, which are these two pieces down here. She'll have a 20% chance to refund a portion of those during this crafting. So that's nice. 
One thing to remember about these oils and potions is they don't actually stack. So you can't do like uh, two waters and get 50%, that won't work. And you can't even do like two of the uh, frostings and two of the flamings. It's not like you can get an extra 25 for your pyro and a 25 for your cryos. It's, it has to be one or the other. If you consume multiples of these at the same time, I'm pretty sure it just takes the most recent one that you've consumed and it applies that effect. Also, don't forget that you could go through and get some food if you are having issues. Basically, you would just choose the highest level food that you can for whatever you have unlocked. Depending on what AR you are when you're currently watching this video, you may only have one star foods, you may only have two star foods, whatever it is. But just go through and pick whichever ones make the most sense for your team. If you need extra crit rate, you can do this. If you need extra attack, you could do that. Just kind of consider that just note that these don't stack at all if you try to do two food pieces that have the same emblem up here then they don't stack so two attack foods don't stack two defense foods don't stack uh just don't do that like I have. Okay, so we're actually going to take a look. This is something that I pre-recorded a little earlier. Uh, this is actually going to be my run. You saw the characters that I was using. Kaya is going to be basically my main DPS. I do have uh, a Nemo Traveler, Lisa, and Amber, all characters that you should have by AR-16. And you can see we do have Slowing Water, which is going to increase the skill cooldown like we talked about. Now, I'm assuming whenever you're going through this that you have a main DPS and then whatever else is just kind of whatever you have. So you can kind of see in this first part of the domain, I literally just tear through it. My Kaya is, he's my main DPS, but uh, I kind of overstacked him <laughs> a little bit. So let's let's actually skip ahead because I, uh, I do one that's not, yeah, okay. So this is the one that's gonna make a little bit more sense. So my Kaya is two stacks, so I try not to use him very often. This first section, basically Lisa is gonna be the MVP. If you have a way to literally just go into this domain and pop her ult, you can see that she literally will zap almost everything. And if you can use Baron Bunny, which this is not a very good example, if you can use Baron Bunny to lure the slimes into the AOE for Lisa, then you can essentially eradicate everything very, very quickly. One thing to note is you might want to try and prioritize the larger slimes first and then just kind of clean up with uh, your main DPS after you have everything there. All right, so this is actually gonna be level two, the exact same team. I haven't changed anything. I don't actually change anything for the first three. So essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna focus on these wooden shield trolls. The reason that they're super important is because you can basically afflict them with pyro. You can do it a little faster if you shoot them with Amber's arrow. But what that allows you to do is create a lot of swirl damage with pyro infused, and you can do a lot of extra damage to them just by having the Anemo Traveler. So you can see you're doing tons of vaporize, you're doing all kinds of reactionary damage, and that helps out so much. Essentially, use these wooden shield trolls to your advantage, and you can pretty much vaporize and get rid of everything else really quickly. After you pretty much have like the gist of the domain cleared out, you can just go through and clean up with your main DPS. Here's a little better example of using Baron Bunny to keep these guys inside of uh, Lisa's AOE. Yeah, like I said, you can literally just go through and clean up after this. Same stuff still applies. Um, you can essentially just try to use as much elemental damage as you can. This is not super insane. Uh, freezing is actually really good on this, this section here. So Kaya is pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, one thing to remember is Lisa, when using Electro on this Hydro domain, a lot of times Lisa's Electro will bounce between enemies. So you can kind of use that to your advantage as well. All right, so this is actually gonna be level three. Um, everything's still exactly the same. I haven't changed any of the team yet. Um, essentially what I would recommend on this one is targeting these Samatrols first, getting rid of them so that they can't reapply the status effect. Sometimes they're just super annoying. And by them applying the Hydro status to the enemies, usually that actually affects the enemies so that they can uh, slowly be healed. I'm not super sure if it still applies to this domain. I'm trying to trying to see if it does but uh anyways you can kind of see lisa her electro bouncing around there so you can see he's got this healing field up right there so you kind of want to get rid of them as quickly as you can now remember none of my characters have any kind of like artifacts they have you know pretty mediocre weapons uh i'm literally trying to <laughs> hinder myself so that this makes it a little bit more fair but essentially Target the Samatrols first, get rid of them as quickly as you can because if they are able to heal, you don't want that to happen. 
Target some of the smaller slimes if you start getting low on time because it does reward you for each enemy that you kill. So keep up your time by just, you know, taking off some of the smaller ones first. And then you can kind of go back and clean up the bigger enemies as, uh, as you get them whittled down. Now, what's special about this one is there is going to be an Abyss Mage, if you remember. So the Abyss Mage is going to be kind of the biggest hindrance in this section. He's going to be pretty, pretty ugly. So what I do right here is actually use Amber to vaporize the shield, but Lisa actually seems to work a lot better at this. If you just use her auto attacks, I don't think I used it um, this early on, but if you just use her auto attacks, it, it works so much faster. But you can freeze with Kaya, as you see there. You can do some more vaporize. And I just would focus on this Abyss Mage as much as you can, and then take out some of the smaller slimes as your time starts to whittle down, so that that way you don't um, that way you don't you know completely mess up. I uh, kind of got some stagger there with Amber and screwed myself over. Um, also, don't forget that Swirl works amazing on those shields they they actually do really really good and sometimes with the traveler's ult you can infuse it with better elements since the slimes are affected by hydro constantly it is kind of hard sometimes to get that to go off but if you can pull it off it works really really well you can constantly keep them frozen and stuff like that with that ult and it's really really nice so here you can see we finally broke through that abyss mage shield and we are just trying to get as much damage as we can our main carry does die but we can still clean up here under that lisa ult we've still got plenty of damage and we're just gonna try to clean up here notice that my food is on cooldown for the revive so i'm literally just having to use what i have to clean up but luckily it works out just fine there's only one enemy left and there you go now, on level 4, this is where I actually changed the team. So I'm assuming by level 4, the recommended party level is at level 80. And you're probably going to have some stuff built up at least high enough to get through this domain decently easy. I did still try to hinder myself. I only put in my main carry, which is Fischl. She's the highest damaging unit that I have right now. And I still kept everybody else the same. I just replaced Fischl with Lisa because Electro for Electro. And uh, I did actually put some artifacts on the other characters, but they're nothing insane. It's basically just feathers if I had them and set bonuses were the most important thing to me. So essentially all you're gonna do here is the same stuff. We're basically in this first section, we're only gonna have large slimes. So you're just gonna have to try to beat through these as quickly as you can. Your main carry, if you can focus on elemental reactions with them, my official is able to put um, Oz on the field and since Oz is on the field, he can, you know, slowly do damage and stuff like that. That actually helps out a ton. Any other um, main carry that you have that is able to do reactionary damage is going to be huge. So definitely try to focus on that if you can. My official is, she is built to do a lot of physical damage. So I just try to take advantage of that as much as I can. Um, slowly using other characters ults and stuff like that you can see even with artifacts my other characters aren't doing hardly any damage but I try to keep Oz on the field as much as possible so I can keep doing that reactionary damage and with Kaya that does superconduct with Amber that does overload and being able to swirl and stuff like that works out really nicely so with the two abyss mages this is still pretty annoying um, Amber being my only pyro character is not optimal but we try to make through it, and I'm also trying to battle the cooldown for Oz here as well. Um, I don't have anything that will cleanse that status on me, I don't think. But essentially, I'm just trying to get rid of this. I'm waiting on this cooldown so I can swirl. You notice that the swirl does tons of damage there. And then as soon as Oz comes back, we're going to pop Oz. And that should pretty much secure it. At this point, one of the things about Abyss Mages is you can kind of stagger them if you stagger them with an elemental skill or any kind of a nemo based attacks that you can do that will launch the enemy uh, those are always going to be very very good because they will stagger they'll move the the enemy around and they'll prevent the abyss mages from getting back up and actually doing anything now for clearing this pretty quickly um 
I mean, this is obviously a pretty stacked team. These teams are at least 60 on their levels minimum, and they all have plus 16 on the artifacts, except for maybe like one or two artifacts per character. Uh, I usually don't power up the flower very high, but most of them have at least plus 16 on all the important stuff. I'm gonna pop all of this, and as you can see, we're just gonna start tearing through stuff. Now, Fischl is gonna be doing probably the most damage out of this team, simply because uh, she's just stacked, but any kind of pyro damage that we can get off, anything like that, will actually super duper help. And as you can see, we do have Deluxe ult here. And that just, that just works so well. All right, we do have Bennett's ult. So this is where we can talk about cleansing. Um, I kind of want to save it, to be honest. I'm going to save it for the Abyss Mages so that we can kind of show it there. Okay, so now that we have the Abyss Mages, what I kind of want to do is break these shields. One of the things that we can do is kind of lure them together. This is a pretty common tactic in a lot of domains, but if we can just lure them together, this... Yeah, there we go. So this actually works pretty well. And we can just kind of do extra damage here. We'll pop this Bennett ult. And as you can see... All right. So if you'll notice down at the bottom, we are afflicted by Hydro on some characters. But, if you notice for a quick second, it didn't last very long. You can actually afflict yourself with Pyro using Bennett's ult, which will cleanse that status and get rid of that for you. And then once you can get rid of this, you can just kind of clean up here. Still took 328. So let's try to speed run this, if you will. We're going to try to do this. What was our time last time? 330 something? We're just going to try to do it as quickly as possible. Oops. Oh. Might be better to do that up against like the wall or something. I hate that move. Okay, so that wasn't amazing, but that's just over two minutes. Just to kind of wrap things up, we're going to talk a little bit about um, characters that make sense in this domain. Uh, I guess first, let's do the don'ts because they just don't make any sense. Uh, child, not really going to be the main bread and butter unless he is built to do physical damage in his bow stance instead of his melee stance. But his melee stance and his ults do hydro damage, so not really optimal. Mona, I guess you could use her if you just needed her for the um, the the taunting of her E. Other than that, she doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use here at all. Sing Sho, his elemental skill does hydro damage. His uh, elemental burst does hydro damage. And I guess unless he's your main carry, which... That's already a weird choice, and I'm kind of questioning your your judgment on him. Uh, but don't don't really use him. He's not really that amazing um, in this specific domain. Outside of this domain, <sighs> Barbara also, unless she's your only healer, don't really bring her. She doesn't really do a whole lot for this domain. Outside of that, you could literally use almost anyone else. Um, anyone that has something that directly reacts to Hydro, like freezing them or vaporizing them or electrocharged all of these things make tons of sense and then geo characters are kind of like the outlier here they're going to basically be doing no like reactionary damage they're only going to do crystallizing stuff and that's you know a hydro shield in this is going to be amazing so if you have geo it's going to be really really nice for you if you need some extra tank inside the domain itself if you can output the damage already or if your geo is just by chance in your you know arsenal then you don't really have to think twice about it geo is kind of like the outlier in terms of like it just does good on its own but yeah that's pretty much the Celia garden if there's anything that you have as far as tips for this domain please post them down below the whole purpose of me doing these videos are literally to help people gain as much knowledge as possible i also don't I don't claim, I don't try to claim to know everything. I'm just trying to give my experiences and what I personally do for these things. So if you post something that you have that I didn't talk about, I'll learn it and I, I'll probably start using it. But that, that, that's it. See ya. Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.